Welcome, friend of child. And congratulations on the first day of your illustrious career with the Fatui. You sound remarkably sure of yourself. Remember, we are mere mortals. But back to the matter at hand. Child tells me that he has upheld his end of your agreement. What agreement? Oh, the thing about him helping us find a guy? Correct. Child promised he would find someone to break the stalemate. Ah, where is that guy anyway? Child is currently at Leoli Pavilion. Oh, oh, Paimon knows this one. Ahem. There are two styles of cooking in Liyue, known as Lee style and Yue style. The flagship restaurant of the Lee style is the Liyue Pavilion. The owner especially chose to open the restaurant at Feiyuan Slope so they could compete face to face with the Xinyue kiosk. Don't talk to Paimon like that. Anyway, Paimon's hungry. Aha, you made it. As promised, I have found someone who can help you. Someone who can solve the mystery of why the Liyue Chising would hide the Geo Archon's vessel. So, where is he? In Liyue Pavilion? He certainly is. I took the liberty of setting up a business dinner. Welcome back, sir. You honor us with your patronage. Mr. Zhongli is awaiting your arrival in the room you booked. <sighs> there he is. Oh my god. Hi. Hmm? Hmm. Allow me to introduce Mr. Zhong Li, consultant to an organization known as Wang Sheng, and a trusted associate of the Fatui. Indeed, Wang Sheng's line of work can be sensitive at times. And we, the Fatui, have always been glad to do business with friends who walk in the shadows. Walk in the shadows? It is an honor to meet you. I have heard tell of you from Mondstadt. Discretion? Shadows? <sighs> is Wangshan some kind of business involving... dealing with people? Indeed. It is as you have guessed. The Wongsheng Funeral Parlor organizes burials. Huh? <laughs> Did you think he was some sort of hired killer? The Fatui calls many such people friends, but the Wongsheng Funeral Parlor does not dabble in such business. Well, ostensibly. Well, they are still... Uh, I shouldn't say too much. Because I can bring you to see Rex Lapis's vessel. What? <laughs> Don't be so surprised. Sure, the Geo Archon's body has been squirreled away by order of the Tian Chuan Ningguang. Uh, but first, let's hear what Mr. Zhang Li has to say, shall we? Rex Lapis may be the prime of Adepti, but he is ultimately an Adeptus. The times have changed. You must have felt it too when you were at Jueun Karst. Archons go by many names the God of Contracts, the God of Commerce, the Warrior God, Morax. Rex Lapis. Is the idea that he also has the title of Adeptus so strange? As you have seen, the time of the Adepti is ending, and the time of mankind is slowly dawning. 
In years past, Liu's tradition was that a huge memorial service be held to mark the passing of every Adeptus. Yeah, the killer hasn't even been caught yet. Decide or not, the concern of the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor is this. When the ritual to receive this god is so kingly, it is all the more egregious for his final send-off to go unattended to. Traveler, Child has told me a lot about you. Well, if you really think about it... Indeed, no amount of consideration can change this outcome. The Tianquan Ningguang has forbidden anyone from accessing Rex Lapis's vessel. Precisely. Only by participating in the rite of parting will you be able to see the form of Rex Lapis again. If we are agreed, come with me. All right, my bridge building work here is done. Turned out well, didn't it? You can go if you want to. Don't worry about me. I might just have a few more drinks. After having experienced the land of the absentee Archon, Traveler, how does it feel to know that our Archon and Adepti are here all around you in Liyue? Indeed, the weight of 3,700 years worth of history runs deepest in the true divinity of Liyue. Organizing the rite of parting should prove to be an enlightening part of your travels. Liyue is the most prosperous of the Seven Nations, defended by deities and ruled by the Qixing. Ningguang of the Qixing has always been on her guard against the Fatui. Huh. What would Child get out of us doing the rite of parting anyway? I neither know nor do I wish to know. These are the advanced funds that Child has provided. Wow! Well then, let us be off. Welcome to the Jade Mystery, my good friends. It's cheap and it's fun, and who knows, you just might strike it rich. Betting? No, no, we're here for... Um... What was it again? Noctilucus Jade. Of Radiant Grade, at the very least. Radiant Grade, Noctilucus Jade? What do you think? The Jade Mystery is an old name in the Jade business. These three pieces really do look pretty. Not like the ones you usually dig up. But how do we pick? Should we just grab one and go? Oh? You want me to decide? If it were me, the answer would be simple. Oh? And that would be... I'll take them all, boss. Oh, you act with such panache, good sir. Oh, wait, wait, boss! That one didn't count! We need to discuss it again! Hey! If we only need one for the ritual, aren't we wasting three times the Mora if we buy them all? Oh, Mora. Hmm. It is as you say. I suppose I overlooked this particular aspect of the transaction. Huh? How do you not think about Mora when buying things? If one must always consider Mora before acting, then in all things one is bound by Mora. Uh, what? All Mora is currency, but not all currency is Mora. What? Is this how the rich live? Well, he knows a lot about 
about big money, but not a lot about big savings. No need to waver. Even when I am constrained by Mora, I have ways of working around my limitations. Evaluating the quality of Noctilucus Jade is indeed very tricky. Only after the item made using Noctilucus Jade has taken shape will you be able to see whether it is up to par or not. If you return to those crafty merchants to quibble, they will counter by saying that your crafting bench is to blame, or that your heat control was poor. Whoa! To think it's that easy to get cheated! But there is a way to truly evaluate this jade, and a true insider would know it. A fool sees the pointer and misses the moon. What does that mean? If you point at the moon with your finger, a wise man knows that you are pointing at the moon, while a fool will only see the finger, the patterns, the facade. These are all the finger. Noctilucus Jade of excellent quality would have superior pyro affinity. In other words, the I have imparted the priceless secrets of the jade trade to you. Priceless, huh? Paimon's just said that we might never be able to use it again. We're back to buy some rocks, boss. But can you let us burn them first? Uh, burn them? You can't do that, my friends. If you were to do so, what would I have to sell? That would... well... fine. How about this? I can take a small sample of all three. Don't worry. I know the rules. All right. Take these as samples. I've carved them off with a knife and tagged them to boot. Aren't these too thin? Even paper's thicker. No- Stingy? I've already been very generous. But wouldn't something this thin go poof if we held it to the fire? It can't be helped. Trying to deprive a merchant of his profits would be like forcing a ravenous wolf to vomit up the food in its stomach. What sort of conditions? While we add the high temperatures using pyro, we can use Hydro to reinforce it from within. Oh! <laughs> oh, sir, to think you were this learned. Strictly speaking, asking for samples when we have not yet agreed to purchase the goods is unfair. Well, guess we just need to find a place to try this out. You mean at one mean restaurant? That would not do. <gasps> oh, Paima remembers we once saw this Big pot down at the Data Upa Gorge in the camp of the hilly churls from the Meaty Tribe. Now, let's pack those samples up and make a move. It has been a long time since I last set foot in the Nation of Wind. A friend of mine from Mondstadt would always bring a few bottles of locally brewed dandelion wine whenever he came to visit me in Liyue. It must be said that the famed liquor of the land of Pastorals is far better than Sumeru's frigid snake wine. The hilly trolls are still using it. It's a bit polite, but we gotta come on. Wind blade. Sure have big appetites. This soup 
Looks like it could be used as our hydro elemental protection. We're ready to go. Paimon will help remember which one of the three is which. Use Pyro to keep making the pot hotter until we get the results we need. Mr. Zhongli said that the shinier and bluer the ore gets, the better it is. So, pay close attention. No escape! Oh, that light came from the first Noctilucus Jade! Ugh, hilly trolls are surrounding us again! Were they attracted by the light? Such nosy neighbors! Let's take care of them and continue again after! Windblade! Back, my friends. Exactly. That's the one Paimon remembers too. No problem. If you have your eye on this one, you can have it. Then we'll take a box of the third type of jade. Done. All the same, uh, pardon me for asking, but I'm curious. Hmm. I suppose it would not hurt to tell you. Parting? Oh, dear. Oh, it's hard to believe. It is said that when our lord lost his way while going incognito in the city 200 years ago, it was a spoon from the Jade Mystery that he had used to sample the local delights. Alas, alas, all things must pass. Are you sure? You didn't want to even give us an inch before. If not for our lord's protection, this city wouldn't exist as it does now. Oh, I'm sure Rex Lapis will feel your sentiment, boss. In the safe hands of the Liu Achising and good, honest merchants such as yourself, I for one believe that Liu Er will continue to prosper as it always has done. All right. Thank you, my friends. Now that we've made our choice, let's take this Noctilucus Jade back. Hey, wait a minute. He said it was half price, not that we could leave without paying. Oh, right. I'm sorry. I must have forgotten to do that, too. As I thought. Any what? Mora. My apologies. Another oversight on my part. Oh, that won't do. This isn't some small sum. That's a relief. Have a look, boss. Is it enough? It's fine. Just enough for half price. Well, it's settled then. Look at you bossing everyone around. You didn't cough up a single Mora. <laughs> I will do my best.
Lord of Geo protect you and fortune find you. We can leave the jade here. I have already called for a jewelsmith to shape them into the implements that we will need. Ah, yes. I have yet to go and see Child. Guess we can't do anything else. Also, is this where we're doing the rite of parting? Yes. I have already rented this location and have begun making preparations for the rite. That's right. The Liu e Qixing have acquiesced to using the same location. But when something this big happened here, should suspects like us really be at the crime scene? Although with that said, since we got back from Dwei and Karst, none of those pesky Millilith soldiers have come chasing after us. Also... Traditionally, we call it the Exuvia. Ah, right! That's what it was called. One must think that they already have someone in mind. Or perhaps they already know. These things are for the authorities in Yujing Terrace to consider. Before the rite is conducted, the Exuvia will be kept temporarily in the Golden House. Golden House? The only mint in Liu, which is to say the only mint into that. Wow! Oh, no! Paimon wasn't thinking about anything bad. But why do you know this, Mr. Zhongli? Since the rite of parting has the approval of the Qixing, it is a semi-official event. Perhaps each has their motives. In Liu, where the god of contracts reigns, only contracts may not be betrayed. Well then, we should go and prepare the perfumes used in the rite. Perfumes? Where will we get those? No. Perfumes used to honor the gods must be freshly decocted. Silk flower petals contain a fibrous material of good quality. Often used in brocade making. It's time for Zhang Li's lectures on high society again. <laughs> we shall not speak of the details right now. Silk flowers? We certainly do. Which kind? The, uh, the good kind? Ugh, you ignorant shoppers. Always coming in here with your stupid questions. Golden housemaiden, valley weaver, and fate's yearning. My goodness, th you two must be his servants. Uh, please refrain from any further attempts to contribute. I'm sorry. Ah, yes. We've met before, haven't we? Now then, please peruse at your leisure. Silk flowers exhibit different properties based on how their environmental conditions differ from their ancestral habitat. Just look at the abundant foliage here. By contrast, this variety thrives in any dark, damp location, often in large clusters. Lastly, this strain is quite the recluse. Silk flowers have all but disappeared from the wild today due to geographical changes over Liu's history. Wow! A true connoisseur! I possess but a smattering of trivial knowledge. Oh, Mr. Zhongli, you're way too humble. I'll take them all, boss. Again? How can I put this? When purchasing opera tickets, it is natural to decide based on which singer has the most melodious voice. But this silk flower purchase is not an analogous case. Perhaps you don't know. Like several other tedious and complicated traditions, this one has become simplified over time. But this is the only rite of parting to take place for one of the seven in 3,700 years. Now that's settled. A question. You forgot to bring money again? Uh, if I may interject, did I hear you say that these flowers are to be an offering to the Lord of Geo himself? Yes, in 
in a sense. Gosh, well, why didn't you say so? It would be bad luck to say it out loud. Since these flowers will be used to glorify our Lord, they're free of charge. Are you serious? Why wouldn't I be? If he hadn't written those poems in praise of my wares, they'd only be worth a fraction of what I can sell them for today. Huh. So much folklore here revolves around Liyue's deity making cameo appearances in support of local businesses. Thank you, boss. I think I speak for all of us when I say that your generosity has saved our skins. Our skins? Please, it's the least I could do. So, now that we've got the flowers, how do we make the perfume? Ideally, with the help of an expert. Talk about first world problems. Hence, I need you to help by asking around in the city. So this time, we get to go around town looking for nice-smelling ladies to talk to? I will wait for you near the Statue of the Seven. Maybe we can find some good candidates at the Adventurer's Guild. <gasps> Let's ask Lan! She's master of the Liyue... On, we need to ask you for a favor. I stopped accepting commissions a long time ago. Oh, it's not that kind of favor. It's <laughs> wow, just wow. Do I look like the kind of girl who wears perfume to you? Well, Paimon thinks you smell amazing. Now that you mention it, yes, there is something. Oh, it must be from the Qingxing flowers I picked on the way back. Aha! The truth is out. Lan's got a soft spot for wildflowers. Uh, no, they were for medicinal use only. Anyway, this is a pointless conversation. The fortune teller, right? Thanks, Lan. See you around. Hello. How may I help? We've come to ask you a question. Perfume? I rarely think to use it, let alone about how to make it myself. That said, some of the cosmetics I use are scented. Since I usually set up my stall by the docks, I avoid perfume like the plague. That's the worst thing Paimon's heard all day! While we're on the subject, have you never heard anyone mention Ying Ar's homemade perfume? Ying Air? Oh, as in scent of spring, Ying Air? Yes, that's her. Many a rich family's daughter has gotten her to make perfume for them. Great! This is just the intel we need! Well, hello. You found me at last. What? How did you know we were coming? Oh, I heard a rumor about a couple who were snooping around town looking for a sweet-smelling lady. Actually, I was starting to worry you wouldn't find me. Snooping around? What can I say? People love to talk. Relax. I know why you're here. Three in one go. My goodness. You have extreme tastes for someone your age. <clears throat> Is that the best you could come up with? Zhang Li was right. People don't remember this tradition anymore. As one of my favorite poems goes, O oh, cherry tree, begrudge not thy blossoms as they are deflowered in the spring, for come winter, even thy sturdiest wood shall wither. That went over Paimon's head a little. <laughs> in short, I'm happy to help. So... 
Where is a good place for making sweet, sweet perfume? Where is that, Mondstadt? Somewhere closer to home will do. I've had a word with Chef Mao. Are you ready to please me? What did you say? I meant make me proud. While I'm setting up, you can go and fetch some water. This water will do nicely. Now, I need you to extract the silk flower essence using a crafting bench. Perfume making uses an altogether different technique from alchemy. Here, let me teach you. Very carefully, take hold of the mortar and pestle. You need to keep your wrist firm so your hand doesn't slip. Now, use your strong hand to stir it with a persistent rhythm. Keep going until the... Ooh, you're a natural. Now, take these and try it out on your own using a nearby crafting bench. Don't forget to do all three. Wow, this is some exquisite silk flower essence. The essence is placed into water and simmered over a low heat until most of the water has boiled off. You must take care to control the heat during this process, so please focus on controlling the heat. Don't waste a drop of that essence now. All three perfumes are ready, and you, my friend, were a wonderful assistant. A testament to the lengths you will go to for romance. It's so rare to see nowadays. Anyway, shall I give you a brief overview of each scent? Paima wants to hear this. This first one is sweet as candy, straight out of a fairy tale. The second one is for those with more refined tastes. Finally, the third one has a soft but lingering scent. All clear? Don't get them mixed up now. You're good. Be sure to come with- I'll leave you with some parting words. One who tries to sail three boats simultaneously should be careful not to go overboard. <laughs> come and hang out with me at Scent of Spring sometime, okay? Let's take these three perfumes over to the Statue of the Seven! We've brought the perfumes, Mr. Zhongli! Did we take too long? You- uh, Oh, you're back. Compared to the watch that Rex Lapis's statues have kept over Liyue, this was but a brief moment. <laughs> well, how can a person compete with a statue? That is true. Three sets and... <sighs> Thank you both. Let us offer them up. This is the first 
kind of perfume. Miss Yinger said that it's sweet as a dream. And this is the second kind. It's got an elegant smell. And the, the third kind has a gentle but lingering fragrance. Something, something like the dusk mist. And it's a favorite of mature ladies. Oh, what was that? That's the one older ladies like, right? Does that mean that Rex Lapis is actually an older lady? <laughs> Perhaps. Rex Lapis has taken on countless forms. What a shame. We only got to see the giant dragon form. <sighs> Let's hope the Cheesing can catch the real killer. We can leave that to the authorities. So, we finished another step in our preparations. Next, I would like the two of you to help me borrow the cleansing bell. Cleansing bell? At present, a friend of mine named Madame Ping is the guardian of the cleansing bell. Sure, but aren't you going to come with us? Ah, I have certain reasons why I cannot be there in person. Man, why has he got to be so secretive this time? <laughs> things must change. Hmm. Youngster, are you here to admire the flowers? Ah, but it's a shame. What happened to them? Back in my day, people said that glazed lilies can read human hearts. If they heard beautiful sounds like laughter and singing, they would also bloom joyfully. But... If they heard too much wild gossip or slander, they would quickly wither away. So that means these flowers feel what's happening in Lila? Yes. The rumors of Rex Lapis's death are no small matter. Some say it was a Fatui plot. This harbor is like a mountain of dry tinder. Well, I shall say no more. Ah, that old trinket. An old friend of mine used to wear it on his person. Back when I was young, he saw me gazing at it often and gave it to me. But he told me then that if someone should come to borrow that bell, I should not be loath to part with it. It has been many years, and who knows how many times someone has come to borrow this bell. Still, though, I can't recall when. It started. It's been a long time since anyone has come to borrow it. Oh, these old bones are so slow to look for things. That's right, Granny. We'll follow you back home and search for it ourselves. And, um, we can help with chores if you have any, too. All right, children. There is no need to worry. Uh, do you live near here, Granny? Oh, <laughs> An old lady like me can't afford to buy a place in this city. See this ceramic teapot? My entire household is in here. How does that work? Oh, youngsters. <laughs>
Youngsters, this is where this old woman keeps all her things. Quickly now, go fetch that bell. Whoa! That sounds like Granny's voice. So, this is her teapot? What's going on? Oh dear, so many cobwebs. <laughs> It seems I really haven't cleaned it in a long while. <laughs> Sorry to trouble you, children. Please help an old lady clean up. So sorry. Dodge this. Ha. 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 Freeze. Ha. 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 Let it rain.
Oh, you found it. <laughs> Youngsters are so quick on their feet. Oh, now, let me... All right, that'll do. <laughs> Come on out now, children. In and out in no time. An adeptus. Oh, I haven't heard anyone say those words in earnest for a long time. As to whether I am one or not, child. Surely you already understand? Ah, oh, Hyman kinda knows what you mean. But is also kinda confused. Don't you think it's weird? Oh, don't be silly. Leo Harbor has been through a great deal in its history. But no matter what, we have always performed the rite of parting first before any other matters. To cry, catch the murderer at the top of one's lungs, but ignore the rite of parting. Now that you have come to borrow the bell, I guess that perhaps an old friend of mine has finally decided to take matters into their own hands. So, why would I be unwilling to lend you the bell? Oh? Well, if it came to that, <laughs> they would find a certain old lady knocking at their door. We haven't met in a while anyway. It would be nice to share a drink and chat. Well, you must have things to do. Oh, and do tell the person who sent you that if they have time, they can come over for tea. We will. Thanks, Granny. Indeed, this is the cleansing bell. Let's place the perfume we've prepared inside. Of course. How would I know that the bell was with her otherwise? That's suspicious. But if you don't want to talk about it, we won't pry. Oh, yes, that old granny asked us to tell you something. If you have the time, you can come over for tea. <laughs> that tone does not suit you. Still, her teapot is indeed very good. When a suitable time arrives, I'll bring a spot of fine tea and pay her a visit. So what's the next step in our preparations? Hmm. Next, we need to purchase kites. Ooh, Paimon loves kites! <laughs> no, no. Kites are children's toys, yes. But they also play various symbolic roles in Liyue's rituals. I will explain it to you. But our next course of action should probably be to purchase the kites first. Oh, sure. You're here. The seven kites you asked for have been made to order. Yes, thank you. It's rare to see customers who want to buy this type of kite nowadays. Well, this is Mr. Zhang Li from the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor, so he's probably well versed in all these walks of life. We've talked about a whole bunch of things while traveling with him. He seems to know Liyue's favorite topics, money and government, really well. But he likes talking about less useful topics instead. 
Well, that's because I prefer to share fun things with you. <laughs> Children's toys are very fun things, that's for sure. Finely crafted toys are well loved by children. I have made kites in Liyue for 40 years, and I am intimately familiar with the forms passed down from my ancestors. Indeed. These are decorations used in the rite of parting. I took the liberty of coloring outside the lines when doing the insignia of the Animo Archon. As for the kite that honors the Geo Archon, one must follow the contract given right down to the last letter. Ah, Paimon's heard that name before. Huh? The design of this kite displays a firm grasp on the cyclicality and eternity so dear to the Electro Archon. These markings of tree and leaf pay due honor to wisdom in the passage of time. Justice flows across the surface of the waters. War rages like a flame, as does that which the Cryo Archon wants. <laughs> The compliments of a learned man truly are pleasant. Well then, Granny Shen, I shall take these back with me. As for the payment... Well, allow me. Hey, it's Child! <laughs> no, I was merely passing through. I see Mr. Zhang Li's the same as ever. When paying, well, he knows a great deal about money. And about the trials of the common man, or perhaps you could say that he cannot imagine himself lacking money. How has he not died of hunger yet? <laughs> Child, you are as fond of jokes as ever. Well then, since we've purchased our kites without incident, there's no need to take a break before moving to the next step in our preparations. The rite of parting requires helping hands as well as materials. Oh, by the way, take this bag of money. You probably won't want to let Zhang Li do the bargaining, if you know what I mean. Hmm, seems I missed out on some interesting information. I suppose I'll just have to find a more opportune moment next time. Hiring help? Sure! But let me just say first that I'm a reserve member of the Adventurer's Guild. Adventure? Venturing into the mountains to capture a few crystal flies seems adventurous enough. Eh? That's not hard. Almost a bit too easy for a reserve adventurer. A most fair price. A pleasure doing business with you. Always put in 100% effort into everything I do. So what's the job? Let me see. We are still missing some wooden implements over at Yujing Terrace. No problem. That'll be 20,000 mora for a single trip. Done. Let me think. Deal. This price is reasonable. A full day of odd jobs at you. Whoa, that's expensive. 
Um, could you give us a bit of a discount on account of the whole Hero of Mondstadt thing? Hero of Mondstadt? Well, you may never have heard of this hero, but it seems you've heard of Mora nonetheless. This is all you've got? Then no can do. Child? No, no, no. How about this? Let's make a... Find me a high-quality lotus head. Guess we've got no... Have you brought the goods? Oh, that looks good. I'm hitting the kitchen tonight, and it's not often that I get to use such fresh and high-end ingredients. Well, I'll head to Eugene Terrace in a moment. I All finished then? Splendid. You think you can buy us off with some loose change? <laughs> well, how does this sound? What info do you need? Huh. Does that mean you know what he's after? Yikes! You're right, Signora! <laughs> you both need to calm down. I don't know what's gotten into you. Just what is this about? The atmosphere got so tense all of a sudden. Next, we need some everlasting incense. Is... everything okay? Everything is fine. I was just informing them that they need not return the surplus mora. Now if you'll excuse me, I must be going. Simon definitely felt like Child wasn't happy with us just now. Boo-boo Pharmacy. Huh? D did you hear that? The reception, it seems. How about you go check it out? over here it can't be she's a zombie welcome to boo boo pharmacy i am chi chi once upon a time chi chi died then chi chi was saved by the adepti something like this would be unimaginable in mondstadt uh hello little girl excuse me sir did you bring your prescription? I... Surely no prescription is needed to purchase everlasting incense. Chi-Chi can get your medicine. But only if you show Chi-Chi your prescription. Zombies are limited to acting within the confines of their orders. My dear Chi-Chi, we didn't bring a prescription, I'm afraid. Okay, then. How did you manage that? But Chi-Chi helps you. You help Chi-Chi. Since when do customers need to do favors for customer service staff? Never mind. Just think of it as a peer-to-peer -peer transaction. Go to Mount Tianhong. Find the Guizhong Ballista. Hmm. Guizhong Ballista. I have heard of this device before. It's a kind of crossbow turret. 
installed on Mount Chinhung by an adeptus in the distant past. An early mechanical device. Located in Chinhung Pass, it was designed to automatically fire at large monsters, protecting Liyue from external threats. Mr. Zhang Li really knows Liyue inside out. Apparently not quite. This is the first I have ever heard of the Coco Goat. The Coco Goat is a legendary animal. Did you want to add anything else, or...? No, just that the Coco Goat is a legendary animal. What it looks like, don't know. Where to find it, don't know either. Where it came from, also don't know. Very well then. Let's start by investigating near the Guizhong Ballista. <sighs> what the heck is a Coco Goat? 